Hey guys, this is Shreyas and welcome back to another video. So this is going to be a different type of a video where it will be mostly me talking about my thoughts rather than giving you feedback about a product or something. Rather, a lot of things around this product and not exactly this product, the OnePlus Nord. I have it for a couple of days now and got me thinking that how did OnePlus exactly manage to bring this phone at this price point? And let's not forget this was probably the most hyped phone of 2020 and the funny thing is that it's a mid-range phone. It's under 30,000. So let's talk pricing first. This phone comes at 27999 and 29999. Yes, there is a 24999 variant but I don't think it's really worth it for 6GB RAM and 64GB of storage. I think the second variant is the sweet spot and is the best value. But if you uh, have some money to spare for long term usage, I would definitely recommend the highest variant. Keeping that aside, let's think like how did OnePlus manage to pull this off? Like why is it so hyped? Why is it so great? Why do people love it? There are some obvious ways where OnePlus did cut the price. I will discuss the, that as well. And there are some which might be some food for thought. Again, this is just my opinion. And if you guys are interested, please keep watching. My OnePlus Nord review is on the way. I'm still working on it and comparing the cameras, etc. It's gonna take time. So stay subscribed. Let's get into the topic now. This is Shreyas and let's take that out. Let's start off with the things OnePlus is doing uniquely in this phone, mostly for this price bracket, okay? You have very few premium built phone. Most phones in this price bracket either have plastic frames, some have metal still. It's not bad, but definitely class does free premium. And honestly, this does give it a very elegant look at this particular design in my opinion. Although it's kind of a ripoff of Realme's design, but they are sister companies, so I think it's acceptable. But anyway, like with the blue color, with the glass back, everything, the bold OnePlus logo, I think it looks really great, even from the front, if you have a look. I would personally love the Onyx grey color. Yeah, I think most people will actually get attracted to this. And since you feel the glass mostly, it really feels premium. Now the second point I want to touch upon is the screen. It has an OLED 1080p 90Hz screen. How many mid-rangers at this price segment has this particular configuration? And I feel OnePlus just nailed the screen specs in my opinion. It's the best middle ground and they could come to this price point as well. And that is why I really love it. It's a beautiful screen for the price. It does not get as bright as the top flagships, but it's bright enough and the colors are good. There is no tinting issues or anything on my uh, device, nothing alarming, normal OLED stuff only. Most mid-rangers in this price segment either have LCD screens, I know IPS LCDs are great. So either they have high refresh LCD screens or they have 60Hz OLED screens. Or most of the phones which do have good AMOLED screens are actually from last year. I know it's not a huge problem and they might have superior processors. I'll come and explain why this might be a better option. Next, they gave off that they their phone had OIS and that's a great thing. Like I have probably seen all the phones in this price segment have only EIS. I know only one more phone, which is the Oppo Reno 3 Pro which has optical stabilization and, and I understand them being sister companies that they could bring these to the price point. Also not to forget that it has the flagship sensor from last year which is the Sony IMX586 and OnePlus has enough experience from its own phones, the 7 series when it was first launched last May. It produces good pictures, I mean that's about it and the video quality is actually pretty good from this sensor. And that is something they have nailed and I feel no other phone really does this much at this price point. The next most important thing is premium software experience. Yes, I feel that Oxygen OS is really premium, especially at a time like this in India. No ads, no bloatware and very well optimized software. Keeping their hardware and software together, I think it's a brilliant package. Also, did I mention software updates? Literally, OnePlus has probably the best record in software updates apart from pixels, obviously. They have constantly lived up to that expectation and provided a great experience 
to the enthusiasts especially and this is the price point at which enthusiasts can now enjoy great software and that's why i feel that it's great next thing related to software which i do want to mention again is a few pixel features like straight from google live transcribe is baked into the software already you get a google discover page on the left just like stock android google lens in the camera app and ambient mode for when you charge your phone so i feel these are really great and for people trying to get the google experience this is the closest it gets and i really value it so this is all good news right like you're getting so much at this price point but obviously oneplus had to cut corners because otherwise it's really not achievable in this industry so where were those cut i'll give you my opinion remember i mentioned about premium build and i said that it feels great yeah i'm going to contradict right now this frame it looks shiny and it looks like metal but it's made of plastic and that is something i realized first but it was very smartly played because most of the part of the phone you touch is actually glass and you won't really feel it after a time because the next time i took up this phone i did not realize it to be honest only when i was trying to you know really feel the frame that i realized that okay this is plastic and i feel most people will actually not care or forget yes it does make it a little less durable but i think it's a okay compromise for the overall experience so the next thing they cut corners on are the cameras yes i did praise the primary camera in the last section where i was saying that it's unique but i'm going to contradict that right now the primary camera is good in my opinion and it's really good for this price segment no doubt but the other cameras are rather unimpressive and i feel this was done for the people who are not tech enthusiasts and are looking for a good valued phone because literally india being a price conscious market and they literally look into the numbers a lot i mean people who do not get the appeal of the software experience i think this kind of <laughs> addresses that part of the audience as well so we all want more for less right but unfortunately this is what you get when you want more for less and that's where i think they really cut corners so the four cameras are great to look at but shooting with it in my experience isn't the best i still save my final comments for the camera reviews i'm working on so stay tuned and subscribe for that and you can see my other previous camera comparisons on the card above so the next point is already available parts in the market tell me this does not look like a realme phone if you replace the back with a plastic and a metal frame different paint job maybe that's it so oneplus saved money on making a more unique design you know using available parts especially from its sister companies also even in terms of hardware the ram the storage the cameras which are cheaper right now which is the flagship camera from last year the storage type ufs 2.1 this is where they actually saved money and that's why they can deliver this particular product at this price point so the next thing is the processor we already know that oneplus had committed to a full 5g approach this year that is why they had to stick to their guns they went with the 765g instead of the 865 which is not like oneplus but i can assure you that the performance hit is nothing major on daily use apart from gaming gaming i'm not an expert so you should watch other videos for that and if you want to see how it affects on a daily basis you can check out my speed test that i will link on the card above so this is kind of against oneplus's philosophy of using flagship specs for the phone and delivering it at a cheaper price but since mid range chips have become so good today they can actually do that by optimizing the software and giving you a near flagship experience if not complete flagship experience next place which i feel saved them a lot of money is an offline event an offline event requires a hell lot of money and they really saved it and they played their cards very smartly they made the world's first ar experience it was not great it was not perfect at all it did create a lot of buzz when you say you're the world's first it makes a difference and that's what they played on and i can assure you no matter what it is the recording of the ar launch was way cheaper than booking a whole hall bringing in the media and sending out invites and arranging the whole event and giving you free stuff next and the most important point in my opinion is free marketing i know a lot of people will disagree with me at this point and say that oneplus created a lot of hype and this is why the phone is going to be a disappointment or is a disappointment blah 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 but sorry i disagree i believe we created the hype 
Literally, OnePlus very smartly leaked one feature at a time from a long period of time. When did we first hear about this phone? Before the 8 series launched, we heard the OnePlus 8 Lite or OnePlus Z, etc. And OnePlus saw that and used it to their advantage. They literally made people talk about it by leaking out one spec at a time at a very slow pace. Every month we had something new about the OnePlus Nord and that was getting everyone excited. And let's not forget it, content creators, people who write articles, websites, etc. started publishing everywhere because that would generate traffic. People were interested. People knew that they wanted an affordable OnePlus phone. It worked out for the content creators, but trust me, it worked out for OnePlus way more than that. That is where I feel that the hype was not entirely created by OnePlus. Yes, they obviously invested and they invested smart. They invested smart with the content creators and probably sponsoring a few meme pages. But really, tell me, three months ago, I remember when I searched OnePlus Z or OnePlus 8 Lite, there were a ton of articles filling up my page and OnePlus was nowhere to be seen. How is that possible? The phone was all over the place even before the company said that they would make such a product. That's where I feel, believe that OnePlus won and it was a marketing masterstroke to release the specs slowly and keep people talking. It's free media, it's free press for them because if I am making a video, I would want people to see my video as simple as that. So I make the video. But OnePlus is actually benefiting out of it more than I am probably. I feel that that is how OnePlus played it. And also to say another thing, they did invest. It's not that they did not invest in marketing, but they did it extremely smartly. They literally had an open interview with MKBHD, one of the biggest YouTubers having around 12 million subscribers. And they teased off the actual design, the other prototypes, the idea behind it, the cost behind it. And guess what? Just after that video went live, OnePlus Nord articles and videos go all over the internet and that just created a lot of hype again and did OnePlus do it directly? No. I feel they did it indirectly and it was very smart of them to play that and they saved a lot of money in that and that's how probably this phone is priced at that. If I was being really honest, I would have bought this phone even at 35 to 37k because this really reminds me of the OnePlus 60 that I bought for around 36 or 38,000. The form factor, the feel, the software experience put together, I feel is quite similar. It had two less cameras, but it's almost the same because, you know, I will consider this mostly a one camera system. That's about it. I hope you enjoyed me blabbering about all this and you got to understand or learn a few things. If you do disagree, have a few thoughts of your own, do share them in the comments. Do leave a like if you like this kind of videos, then I'll be inspired to make more because this is how actually I want my future content to be. Leave us up to the channel if you want to see more content around this. That's it for now and thank you for watching.